Our next speaker is an infectious disease physician, clinical researcher, and an international expert in migrant health. She conducted cohort studies linked with administrative data sets, uh, systematic reviews, economic analyses, and developed clinical guidelines for migrants in Canada and in Europe. Her work highlights the need for screening people born in HCV endemic countries and link them to care once found positive. She's also uh, leading a multi-province uh, CIHR funded study to map the care cascade among key risk groups. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Christina Greenaway. Good afternoon, and thanks very much to the organizers for the invitation uh, to speak. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is just some of the models of HIV, uh, HCV testing and linkage to care strategies among uh, immigrants. And so this is what I want to cover today, and this is what... Um, I'm going to speak about. I'm going to talk about the burden of uh, hepatitis C in immigrants, which I think gets a little bit less airtime as other groups. And so I really hope that I'm going to be able to share with you some of the issues related to hepatitis C in the immigrant population, some of the barriers they face, some of the different models of care that really may be able to engage this population in care, uh, screening and linkage to care, and then a few slides just about um, a community outreach uh, project that we're just uh, rolling out in Montreal, and then some conclusions and challenges. So hepatitis C in Canada, about 1% of uh, Canadians are infected, about a quarter of a million people are, are thought to have um, chronic hepatitis C. And what is important is about a third of those are immigrants born in intermediate and high endemic countries. And everybody is very well aware of this now, the elimination uh, targets. And I just want to bring your attention to the lower uh, bullet point, which is the diagnosis of 90% of hepatitis C cases, which I think this is where the Achilles heel is in the immigrant populations. I think that they're not, uh, I think that they're undiagnosed. And that's a huge challenge that I think that we need to meet. So to reach targets, um, everybody knows this too, that you need high retention throughout the entire care cascade, and we need to have targeted uh, strategies, this micro-elimination uh, approach, uh, which will be quite different between the three groups. And today we're going to talk about the immigrant uh, population, but what's not here on this care cascade, which this is the BCCDC care cascade, is how many people are actually diagnosed. And that is estimated to be 25% in BC are undiagnosed, about 40% in Ontario uh, with, the new, with a poster at this meeting. Uh, but what we don't know is what that is in the immigrant population. And I think that that's uh, higher than, uh, than the 25 to, to 40%. And so these are immigration trends in Canada. We are a multicultural society, and about a fifth of our population are uh, foreign born. And you, you can see that the projection of this is just to increase. So this is really an important uh, population that we need to address. And you'll see here that this is the source countries in Canada of the immigrant population. And so our immigration policies changed to a point system in the 1970s. And so you can see that in the World War I, World War II era, where the majority of our immigrants were coming from uh, Western Europe. Now they're coming from Asia, which is the pink line, and other countries that have a high uh, prevalence of, uh, of hepatitis C. What's also important to know is that the immigrant population is very heterogeneous across the country. And so I'm just showing you where the main source countries are. Um, in Canada, where you can see that half of the immigrants coming to Canada are from Asia. But in Quebec, we have a very different uh, profile of source countries, many more people from um, 
French-speaking countries, and so North Africa, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Haiti and the Caribbean, and many fewer Asians. So it's really important as well is to know what the proportion or what the epidemiology of the immigrants that you're seeing in your setting is. And so there is a disproportionate burden of hepatitis C among immigrants. And so the prevalence is about 2%. So in Canada, it's estimated to be about 1%. And in Canada, or in the immigrant population, it's about twice that. And in other studies, as well as in Europe, um, the proportion is also about half, or twice the host populations. And as I mentioned before, about a third of cases in Canada are occurring in the immigrant population. And what's salient is that very they have very different risk uh, risk profile um, risk profiles. So in a study that we did and other studies um, Curtis Cooper did, that less than about 10% of all immigrants with hepatitis C are intravenous drug users. And so their main risk factor is exposure in their countries of origin, unscreened blood products, vaccinations, injections, unsafe medical procedures, et cetera. Um, in a number of different studies, also immigrants are shown to have increased end-stage renal disease and hepatosarcosinoma at diagnosis and during follow-up, about, about two-fold higher. And they're more likely to, to die during a liver-related hospitalization. And from data from a population-based study that we did in Quebec, that it took a mean of about 10 years to di get diagnosed after arrival, and about 15 years to be treated. So most people say that, well, we screen before people come. Um, and that's not the case. We do not routinely screen for viral hepatitis in Canada pre-arrival, and nor do any high-income countries routinely screen um, most immigrants prior to arrival. So no countries in Europe and the US, they screen for hepatitis B in refugees. So this, so people do not get screened before, and so the really the onus is post-arrival um, health promotion, and there are a number of issues related to screening and finding people and linking them to care in the post-arrival setting. And there are a number of barriers in accessing health care, and there are studies in Canada that show that immigrants utilize health care less frequently than the Canadian-born population due to a number of barriers at many different levels. The patient level, the provider level, and the health system level. And fortunately for us, we have fewer legal and political uh, barriers. But for example, in the US, there's many more uh, legal and political barriers as we have a universal health care system. So the barriers to screening and treatment uptake are complex, and they're quite different than the intravenous drug using population. And so the key barriers as a clinician uh, working in a um, setting where we see a lot of immigrant patients, one of my greatest barriers in delivering health care is language barriers and not having access to interpreters. The other issue is new people coming to Canada, many things that they got to sort out. They've got to find a job. They've got to get their kids in school. They have many other things that they need to do. And they're not used to our healthcare system. So the healthcare uh, system navigation issue can be a major uh, barrier for the immigrant population. Many other competing responsibilities, as I mentioned, and unable to leave work because they're in precarious situations, stigma, fear, et cetera. There's also many barriers on the provider side that many providers do not know that immigrants coming from intermediate and high prevalence settings, uh, hepatitis C settings are at risk and should be screened. And the healthcare system confounds and complicates all of this because many settings do not have interpreters or culturally appropriate or culturally adapted uh, services. And then the other issues of complex testing, et cetera, that have come out many different times in this, uh, in this meeting. So there are some really good examples of different programs that have tried to address these issues. And so I'm going to go through each of these. And you can see that the success of these programs is actually pretty high. So we do have some models of care that I think with some key elements that we can um, 
use. And so this, the HEP screen was an EU funded project that uh, rolled out in four different countries between 2012 and 14. And it occurred in many different settings. So community settings, universities, workplaces, primary care practices, prenatal clinics. And what, but what was um, common across all of the programs was that there was linguistically and culturally matched healthcare workers. And what was found and what was key in this study was that when the, the settings where you had the best uh, screening uptake and the best linkage to care was when people came to, uh, were in, engaged in healthcare and came to a clinic and people were opportunistically screened. So you came for one reason and you were offered hepatitis C screening. Outreach, outreach programs were effective but less effective and were more costly than opportunistic uh, screening. There was another program in New York City where uh, they did a large outreach in 25 uh, different community uh, events to a very diverse uh, uh, population. They publicized the event in, lang in the, in the uh, language of the, uh, of the population. They partnered with community organizations and they were non-traditional uh, venues for screening. Blood, they had blood draws and that they were sent to a lab and there was a really a lot of energy, six, up to six phone calls to deliver results. But the linkage to care was actually pretty good. And then the CDC uh, also had an, a number of um, a number of different programs where they rolled out in different regions uh, to engage immigrants in uh, screening and linkage to care, and all of these programs were both hepatitis B and C. And as you've heard through this meeting, that hepatitis C. Immigrants, there's many uh, immigrants who are at increased risk, but hepatitis B is about threefold higher risk in, than hepatitis C in many groups. And so all of these programs uh, offered both hepatitis B and C. And the key finding or the, the key uh, issue here too was that they provided bilingual care navigators um, who helped them understand the, the screening process and all the way through to linkage to their um, healthcare uh, setting. And what they found was that linkage to care was quite high and in one setting it increased from 64 to 93%. And this was really attributed to strong um, community relationships as well as linguistically appropriate outreach. And so, what, what is clear from a few studies is that you can have high uptake of screening and linkage to care and in one study in a relatively uh, marginalized population in Italy, which is the first study of undocumented migrants, low income refugees in uh, Italy, in a primary care setting where you had culturally adapted services, uh, corridors to referral centers, that the uptake of screening was very high, 85%, and everybody um, who uh, were screened and were positive, uh, were linked to care. And so very, very high uptake. And in another study at Médecins de Monde, which again was in undocumented uh, immigrants found when they, in an RCT, they compared testing, point of care testing, um, for multiple uh, different uh, organisms, HIV, Hep B and Hep C, versus a venipuncture that uh, receiving a blood test was much higher, 98% if it was point of care, and linkage to care was also very high. Treatment uptake among the immigrant population is relatively high, um, and in, in one recent RCT uh, undertaken in the, in the UK in the GP's offices that community-based um, treatment versus standard hospital treatment that uptake was about 80% and not different between the two settings. And in Curtis Cooper's clinic, this is sort of the pre-DA era, that uptake was similar between the, the two groups. And there's a few uh, posters here at this meeting that have shown that that uptake is about 60%. Uh, 
So that's the patient and those are the models of care. But it goes beyond that because we really need to educate the practitioners because these are the people who are screening. And we know that uh, knowledge among um, practitioners is relatively low. There are a number of guidelines that recommend screening um, in Canada, the U.S., and um, many different uh, countries. But screening is not routinely done despite there being um, guidelines. What has really been shown to increase uptake is reminders. So practitioners are busy, and if you get a pop-up saying you should screen this person, the likelihood of screening is higher. And one other, one other study that I mentioned before with respect to uh, the, the treatment, which I find a little bit, was a little bit sobering, was this was a study that, a randomized controlled trial that was done in the UK that looked at... Um, doing screening in GP's offices and incentivized, uh, incentivized screening versus not. So the control arm was uh, just telling the GPs about what the screening guidelines were and who, what the screening guidelines were and who they should screen. And in the intervention arm, they're incentivized to send letters to patients. Um, and then patients either had treatment in the community or in hospital-based settings. The bottom line is that screening uptake was horrible. If you're unincentivized, it was like less than 2%. And if you're incentivized, it was only 20%. So clearly we have to do a little bit uh, more and there were some issues related to the study. Just a few other um, comments about education. One of the key issues is, be able, is to have linguistically and culturally adapted um, education resources. And Katie is a leader in this, uh, in this area and has, uh, does many out, out, outreach uh, programs and workshops, um, primarily with uh, the communities that are listed there on the slide and have, and have developed many culturally and linguistically adapted materials that are very useful for uh, practitioners. The University of BC has also similarly um, developed different uh, resources that are available on the website that can be used in practitioners' offices, and so printed resources, website, uh, short videos, and this, uh, Navid Janjua was involved with this, and one of the things that they noted here as they were doing outreach to the population was that physicians were not offering uh, screening to the South Asian population, and this is who they were doing outreach to, primarily because they didn't know how to screen. And so they they developed a one-page screening and testing guideline to address that barrier. And so just a few words about a project that we're undertaking now. Uh, this is spearheaded by CAPAC and um, Marjolaine and Laurence are sitting in the audience. And they approached me after hearing me talk about uh, the, the barriers to, to care and the increased burden of hepatitis C in the immigrant population. And they really moved this project forward. And what they wanted to do was to do an outreach with a point of care linkage to care in the Montreal Pakistani community and you heard already that the Pakistan has a very high prevalence of hepatitis C and so that's why we decided to do our first outreach in the Pakistani community and so targeting first and second generation um, Pakistanis using a individual or a person or team member who uh, speaks all the different uh, Pakistani languages primarily Urdu but many other dialects to provide um, culturally and linguistically adapted uh, resources based on and thanks to Katie, their resources that they've developed were adapted for our, our project and offering rapid point of care testing. So we've hired a nurse and the nurse will be um, providing the testing on site. Um, and then we'll be supporting with the Pakistani team member um, linkage to care and to my clinic to um, be um, 
screened or if they screen positive to have RNA testing and then to be uh, linked to treatment. And so the plan activities are is that we're planning to roll out six to eight events that we will do a survey of HCV knowledge demographics and risk, risk exposures of during travel or prior to arrival. There will be a nurse who will do this rapid on-site screening and then our Pakistani uh, team member will be able to um, provide information, and as I mentioned, there will be support for uh, healthcare navigation to, to to my clinic. And so, the relevance of this, I think, is taking all of that data that I just showed you and just trying to pilot it in Montreal because we really have not done this in Montreal, haven't done a lot of this yet in Canada. And so, to see how well accepted rapid uh, testing is, um, and the knowledge of the population, and then to adapt this model to other um, high prevalence uh, communities. And I need to acknowledge here uh, the support from CanHep C for, the, uh, for Stephanie, the master's student who's working on this project with us and also funding from, uh, from Gilead. And so what I want to end off with is that I think that the biggest Achilles heel in the immigrant population is the diagnosis. And with the back of the envelope, if it's 75% um, uptake, uh, uptake of screening, which I'm not sure that, uh, that it is, that we really have to scale up uh, diagnosis to really have an impact. And so what I think that I... Uh, what I uh, get from all of this literature is that strategies to increase engagement and linkage to care, really you need to engage with the community, you need outreach uh, workers and health system navigators of the same cultural background and language, opportunistic screening, so with reminders in physicians' offices uh, may be one of the best ways to engage people that, I know that this is a hepatitis C um, conference, I'm an infectious disease specialist. I see migrants. They have many other issues. And so I think that if we have people in the office, we should be giving them a whole package of, of care. And integrated screening and integrated models of care, I think, are um, going to be the most effective most effective. And so I think that the challenges and next steps is that we certainly haven't determined what the optimal model is, and I think that we really do need more information, and I hope that our little study that we start and that um, as a pilot to, um, to roll out more will give us more answers in terms of what's the best model of care. I assume that one size will not fit all, that there may be differences by country of origin and different contexts. It really needs to be patient centered and I really think that we need to be pushing for one-stop shopping, which means screening for all the prevalent diseases, updating vaccines, addressing other, uh, other issues, not very different than the approach in the um, drug using population where you're giving OST and whatever, in the immigrant population a bit different, but I think that you'll be able to engage better if we give more integrated and more complete care, educating practitioners, and we need more data. and obviously political will. So none of the, the last two are not uh, very different. And just to end up, I really think that the biggest issue is finding the miss missing millions, which in the immigrant population, I think that we just have to uh, find this population and then engage them to engage them in care with these different models that I have um, outlined. So with that, I'll uh, end up a couple minutes over, over. Sorry about that. Um, and I guess we're ready for questions. Yeah.